Thank you for this very nice introduction. So Mission Save Heart 2020, from healthy lifestyle to disease prevention, that's what I'm going to talk to, talk about. And very nicely, Dr. Bhandari has actually set the tone that one in four Indians has got heart disease in our country. Now, for the purposes of this uh, communication, when we are saying heart disease, it means coronary artery disease. And I'm going to define these problems because, you see, even in, in our uh, lay literature, uh, the newspaper people say, oh, the patient died with cardiac arrest. Well, all of us are going to have an arrest one day. Heart disease is the number one cause of mortality worldwide. There is no doubt about it. India is not headed for trouble. India is already in troubled territory because more than 25% of Indians are at risk of premature death from non-communicable diseases, which is the largest cause of death. Now, India and our South Asian region for a long period of time was known as a region where communicable diseases were very common. Now we've entered an era where we have non-communicable diseases. And the most prevalent of these are cardiovascular disease, cancers, and chronic obstructive lung diseases. Worldwide, if you look at it, there is no doubt about it. Cancers, COPDs, HIV pale into insignificance when you look at cardiovascular disease. There is no doubt. Coming now to the crunch, highest burden of heart attacks. Don't worry about these high sounding names. In our South Asian community, the presentation of people with chest pain is an acute heart attack. Let me add a caveat here that 25% of those who have an acute heart attack don't get up from the floor and ask their buddies, people, can you help me? They're not even there. So the people who reach there, already the 20% are taken out. The current prevalence of CAD, coronary artery disease, is 19, uh, is 14% in urban India, 7% in rural population. Mind you, we are talking of 133 crore people plus. So if you multiply it, it's a huge, huge number. And of course, the burden of cardiovascular disease, and I'll define what that is, also varies markedly within India itself. It is a myth. We were for years led by a data from the West that below 40, 40, don't worry about it. Heart attacks are not going to occur. And that's why we instituted our own uh, risk profiler, CAD, coronary artery disease in young people aged less than 45 years in men and less than 50 years in women is strikingly more common, strikingly more common among South Asians and Indians, amounting to almost 50, 15% of all heart disease patients. In 2016, there was an estimated 62.5 million years of life lost prematurely due to CVD in India. Look at the unique features of CVD in India, cardiovascular disease, high mortality rate, premature disease is very common. There is increasing burden of uh, uh, disease and there is a regional variation. What about the young people? People feel, oh, I'm young. I'm an executive. Nothing is going to go wrong with me. But if you look at it, high premature mortality is there uh, in India itself. Hypertension is a very common risk factor. I will come to the risk factors, but high blood pressure is common with 40% of those above 25 years of age have high blood pressure, representing 1.4 billion people and high blood pressure not only causes heart attacks, but it also causes strokes. It also causes chronic kidney disease. So you are looking at a whole bundle of diseases with these people. We are also called the diabetes capital of the world. And if you look at it, diabetes prevalence across all geographical areas is 75, 7.5%, hypertension is 25%. And diabetes and hypertension are a very bad brother. Why? Because they called microvascular disease, heart attacks, peripheral vascular disease, and strokes. So those who have diabetes 
and high blood pressure have three times the likelihood of having coronary heart disease. They have left ventricular hypertrophy. And very importantly, they have three times the possibility to develop, to, uh, develop heart failure. This is a topic we will take at some, some time, but the end stage of all things is actually heart failure, where the patient is really, and as Dr. Mandari pointedly asked me, that what about people who have got sh breath, shortness of breath, who have got breathing trouble? Well, there you are. Hypertension, diabetes, causing congestive heart failure, the first symptom may be actually breathing difficulty. Those who are diabetics may not even come with chest pain. They may just come with breathing difficulty. And this is then, oh, people say, oh yeah, it's all right. You have some breathing difficulty, go meet a, a pulmonologist. No, most likely he has got disease of the arteries of the heart. Now also, this is a combination very commonly seen in those who are obese. And I will define to you what obesity means and what, uh, what is the, the, what is BMI. The heart is a muscle. About the so the heart is a muscle, you know, it, all, it, it all beats 100,000 times a day. Now, when this poor guy is working so hard, you may be relaxing on a beach, having a good time, but this is not, it heart cannot relax. So the arteries that supply blood to the muscle of the heart, because it's a muscular organ, are only three. Somewhere during evolution, the arteries of the heart haven't coped up with the kind of work the heart does. So there is a right coronary artery, you can see on the screen very clearly, and you can see a left main coronary artery that divides into a circumflex artery and the left anterior descending artery. These arteries are the ones that continuously supply blood to the muscle of the heart so that it goes on beating all the time. So this is left coronary artery, left circumflex artery. So this was about what this disease in numbers. Now let's come down to understanding what is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease or CAD as it is called is a result of blockage of the coronary arteries. You can see, I've opened one of these arteries and you can see a plaque built up there. You can see all the fat between under the intima and over the media of these vessels. And once they increase, they can cause heart attack. So these are the arteries of the heart. This is clean and this artery is already showing a plaque. So let us, let us look at it. If the patient had 40 to 50% blockages, probably no, no, no symptoms at rest or even during exercise, gradually this plaque increases. This, this is called atherosclerosis. And this term will come a lot many times, atherosclerosis. It, is, it gradually increases and when it becomes over 70%, and if you're an exerciser, you will say, oh, look, when I was finishing my fourth kilometer, I got a catch in my chest. Well, that's angina. And this can block suddenly. This can cause luminal narrowing. So people don't even realize those who are sedentary, those who are obese, those who are, they, those who don't exercise, say, well, look, I was all right. And then suddenly one day, uh, I got a heart attack. Well, the plaque was already there. It could easily have been picked up. So sudden increase, in the luminal blockage, as I've shown you, causes a heart attack. So you're enjoying at a party, people were smoking, alcohol was flowing, high fat diet was there, and see, your 70% plaque ruptured, a bl blood clot formed, and this is a heart attack. Now, many a times, people feel that, you know, I was just having gas, and they overlook it with disastrous results. A part of the heart, when you lose it suddenly on one early morning or in the night, you can imagine that it is a catastrophe. So as I said, 20% of people will not be able to get another chance and tell their people that, look, please, can you do something for me? 
<clears throat> what are the risk factors? Coming straight into what are the risk factors for causing these blockages? First, look at these three risk factors which are put in green. This is 21st century. Now, when people tell me, oh, this is a lifestyle disease, I always tell them that gentlemen and ladies, there is neither life in it nor style in it. Physical inactivity. We are spending time on the lap laptops, on the iPads. Obesity is a gross problem, Dr. Bandari already told us. And very importantly, psychosocial stress. There is stress everywhere. Of course, we are all passing through a very difficult time, but still, there is a stress to look after the family. There is a stress to climb up the uh, social cycle. There is a circle. There is a, to get more money and all these things. So these are physical inactivity, obesity, risk factors. And of course, the four conventional risk factors defined by the Framingham study, cigarette smoking, increased blood lipids, diabetes, high blood pressure. And then, of course, a family history predisposes you to it. And increasing age is a problem. But see, in a country which, has, which is predominantly young, people below 40%, they have 25% chance of getting. So we've blown the myth in India that smoke, that age is of any importance. Yes, over, over 40, over 30, people start getting heart attacks. This is important for us to understand that we should not have, and if we have these risk factors, if we control it, if we diagnose it, certainly we can get away from not only heart attacks, but also from strokes and from uh, kidney damage. Before going into what a heart attack is, and it's already been defined, let me spend 30 seconds on common symptoms during a heart attack. Many a times people have it, but they don't. And first, let me start with diabetic patients. Diabetic patients do not have the usual classic risk for uh, crushing or squeezing a pain. They may have just come with restlessness. They may come with indigestion. They may come with not feeling well, or they may just come with sweating. However, nature of the pain, if you come back to normalcy, crushing or squeezing. Location, usually in the center of the chest. Radiation, it can go to either arm. Duration generally 30, 30 minutes to several hours. Associated breathlessness and sweating. And then again, many symptoms like weakness, nausea, vomiting, feeling of impending doom is extremely important. That look, I thought the world is going to end today. So look at your symptoms and relate these symptoms. When you read the, reach the ER of any major institution across the, across the world, Remember, these are busy guys. Remember. So please be very, very definite that look, I'm having a squeezing pain. I actually thought it was indigestion, but doc, I've had it for a long period, for a couple of hours. Please check me out. Risk of death during heart attack, 20 to 25% during the first clinical manifestation can be a heart attack, of heart attack can be uh, it can be sudden death. One fourth to one third patients having heart attack die within the first 24 hours. So we developed many years ago the concept of the golden hour because if you get uh, a, either a drug or you get angioplasty during the first one hour, then you may have a near normal life later on. Maximum damage to the heart muscle takes place during the golden hour. So don't, don't waste time. After all, what is going to happen? You woke up your wife at 2 a.m., you went to the hospital, and the doctor said, you don't have a heart attack. Fine, no problem about it. But if, it, if, if you were in the dead of the night, if you, did, if you were having it, you saved yourself. Maximum efficacy of treatment is also seen at that point. And survival is the best if you either get a clot buster drug or you get primary angioplasty. In our institution, the door to balloon time is really fantastic. Within minutes of their arrival, they can get an angioplasty done. So time is muscle and muscle is time. Usual reasons of delay, because people expect a dramatic presentation, thinks the symptoms were not serious. They take a wait and see, let, let the morning come or let me reach home. It'll be too late by then. Some people feel it's a fear of embarrassment. Yeah, I was having a board meeting. How could I have just gone out of it that, I will, that people will say you are bothering us? No. 
no but you will be able to save your life and many people who are young or the or the person is a woman they say yeah we are unlikely to get a heart attack these are the usual re re reasons of delay so what do we need we don't need primary angioplasties we don't need bypass surgeries of course in many cases they will continue but what we need to understand as individuals we don't have to be doctors but as common citizens to that what we need is that somebody should predict for us preempt for us and prevent coronary artery disease now we are specifically talking about what happens inside the coronary arteries which can stuff away life within seconds so the prevention rests upon lifestyle changes physical activity i'll come kind of go through all these things briefly and of course there are medicines are there for blood pressure control blood cholesterol lowering blood sugar control and aspirin but see my our aim today is that if we start here we should not be we will not be dependent on medication just by a good change in our lifestyle just by physical activity decreasing our body weight we can do a lot of good to ourselves so i have coined a word called asap if you are above 25 male in south asia or above 30 female in south asia you should be aware of what i have said that heart attacks are the number one cause of death once you know that once you are aware once you are known that you are look i am probably a little on the plus side i have a family history go and get yourself screened i'll come to that once you are aware you have screened yourself you can take action what is the action get into motion do exercise or if the doctor says okay your ldl cholesterol is too high go ahead if you do asa prevention has to follow no question about it so changing gears at this point how do we how do we pick up see the first thing that occurs in our body is endothelial dysfunction and i don't want to go into that but that is the first between that and atherosclerosis there is at least 15 years difference and then and so that we can prevent at that stage but look at it this is the coronary artery it starts with cellular infiltration then a plaque forms then a full blown plaque forms then the plaque ruptures the beauty of modern medicine is that we can diagnose you at the stage of fatty streak we can diagnose you so that you don't go into a stage of full blown plaque or a plaque rupture we can stop you from getting a plaque rupture we can we can stop we can and of course there is a concept of low risk lifestyle factors which i'll allude to if you follow that or at least if you are of an age but your children are in that if they follow that you will not even develop risk factors something that we call as primordial prevention so here is a 35 years old man he is is a ceo he hardly has any time well you need to get blood tests son you need to check your pressure there is a lot of thought going on in the world today of home blood pressure monitoring as dr bandari alluded there are gadgets now which will very accurately give you so if you were having a headache or you if you're not feeling up to it take your blood pressure what's the big deal it may not be just stress or the stress may be falling on your body and of course you can do stress tests of many varieties to diagnose the disease but what i have done in 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 my own institution that i have shifted the paradigm i have started a program of reversal of coronary artery disease in which we can pick up the disease at abnormal vascular health stage which can be done these are high sounding names brachial artery flow mediated vasodilatation a pulse wave velocity or if we miss at that stage we can again catch the person at the stage of increasing carotid imt or coronary uh, calcium score or ct and geography if we can catch you at this stage even at this stage of atherosclerosis we have saved you from acute mi stroke peripheral vascular disease these are horrifying conditions i tell you these are conditions 
that nobody wants to have. But certainly, you have to follow a regime. Carotid intermediate thickness, simple test. You don't have to even go first into your doctor. They will scan your carotid arteries. There is a good relationship between increased IMT in intima medial thickness and disease in the coronary arteries. If you have a plaque sitting in the, in the carotid artery, the artery that supplies blood from the heart goes, takes it to the brain. If the plaque is over for five millimeters, you can very, very well say to the patient that look, you also have a plaque, so start getting into motion. This is carotid intermedial thickness. Let me ask you a question here. Who's, who's older here? A patient who's 38 years old with an IMT of 0.8, the IMT should be just 0.4. And here is a six apps uh, individual. He's 70 years old, but his IMT is only 4.58. So now we are not talking of chronological age. We are talking of vascular age of a person. A person whose intima medial thickness is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, his age may be anything, his vascular age is, he's a young guy. And we have given normative data for Indians. Then you can measure the arterial stiffness. Remember ages ago, old clinicians used to feel your pulse and say, look, you've got atherosclerosis. Now with the uh, periscope, <clears throat> we can exactly find out your arterial stiffness. This arterial stiffness, again, is a measure of atherosclerosis. And of course, you can look at coronary artery calcium, that this is a radiological test. And uh, this, if it reveals calcium in any of the coronary arteries, what more proof do you want? You have coronary artery disease. And if the score is below 300, it still offers it still gives you an opportunity to actually decrease the disease and save yourself from a heart attack. So it is said about coronary calcium, there is a power of zero, which means if you have calcium score zero in 2020, and because of your good lifestyle in 2025, also you have a calcium score of zero, it gives you almost 20, 15 years of life without coronary artery disease. That is the power of not waiting for the disease to occur, but looking at atherosclerosis and starting treatment. Changing gears here, to me, the wellness has been the new mantra. I'm a cardiologist who treats all kinds of cases, and I'm really shocked when I have to do angiographies in patients who are just 30, 35, their, their obese, their body mass index is over 25 or 26 kilograms per meter square. And I said, look, well, sir, we couldn't, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, all go hand in hand. So the new mantra is lifestyle modification. A colleague of mine named it therapeutic lifestyle change, which means this is therapy. If you change it, your flow-mediated vasodilatation will become better. Your atherosclerotic lesions will become better. So this I've taken from the American Heart Association. They say life's simple seven. Say no to saturated fats. Never smoke. Say no to stress. No to sedentary lifestyle. No to excess body weight. Excess sugar and excess salt. Let me very briefly go through this life's simple seven. So if you look at the body mass index of us South Asians, then we have increased body, body, body fat. And so these are two individuals, their body mass index is 22.3, but look at the body fat. So we are made that way. And this is hereditary. This is, this is evolved over a period of time. And India used to have a lot of famines and the liver used to store uh, the, the fat. Uh, so biological, so first coming to the most important factor, LDL, this is the bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. A newborn child is born with between 30 to 50, 40 milligrams per deciliter of LDL cholesterol. Why can't we keep it that way? We can keep it that way, but we, our understanding should be there that which, with each decade, 
as the LDLs, bad cholesterol goes up. Our arteries also start responding to it by storing that fat. Biological basis for lowering LDL is tremendous. The bad cholesterol is the one which is causing blockages in the arteries. People say, well, if it is increased, I'll take a statin drug. But why do you want to have it anyway? And it is important that in the younger years, if you allow it to build up. So we've started a concept which is called not just LDL levels, which are important, but also LDL years. If my child, age 35, has got increased LDL, I, would, I should tell her, well, look, I'm sorry, this is the start of the cholesterol issue. We should check it now rather than it causes a problem. No to smoking, what, I can, what can I say? One of the greatest scourges of human beings of the, of the 20th and 21st centuries is smoking. And smoking kills more people each year than alcohol, cocaine, crack, heroin, homicide, car accidents, all these things put together. Is it, is it, is, it, is, is there a wonder? If, if I'm taking in 200 kinds of different uh, stuff in my, in my system, I'm taking and I'm blowing up my nitric oxide, I'm making my arteries thicken. Is it any uh, wonder that I get coronary artery disease, I get peripheral vascular disease, I get cerebrovascular disease, this is not a big deal. I'm going to get it. Not only that, it worsens the high blood pressure. It, many people with, who have been big time smokers have acetpeptic disease. They're always taking uh, pentaprazoles and things like that. And very importantly, it is the cause of many kinds of cancers. Many, many kinds of cancers. Can you imagine? that this was by far and large, by far and large, reversible, or it couldn't have been preventable. And of course, it causes chronic bronchitis. You see this, the condition of these people, they are always dying, coughing all the time, as, as Dr. Bandari said, breathlessness. They're breathless all the time. It's sickening to see them, and then with that, they also have lots of other problems. So smoking is a big no-no. In fact, smoking, when I, when I very briefly talk about low risk lifestyle factors, smoking comes as an important risk factor, as, in, as an important lifestyle factor, never smoke. So smoking cessation benefits within hours, nicotine and carbon monoxide levels are halved, blood oxygen levels return to normal, just, just imagine. Carbon monoxide is eliminated within 24 hours, nicotine eliminated from the body, taste but starts to recover. Many of these people never enjoy the, the fun of good food. Nicotine keeps your heart rate going all the time. When I may go to a, see a sick patient, my pulse rate may be high, but nicotine keeps it high all the time. And my heart will absolutely then go into cardiomyopathy. Smokers have also called a cardiomyopathy, apart from the fact they are thickening of arteries, they have premature coronary artery disease, they have premature atherosclerosis, and of course, uh, it's bad for their family. I mean, they are, passive smoking is bad for the people around them. Within one, one month, the appearance improves, the skin, skin loses, the grayish paler, they have less wrinkled, their regeneration of respiratory cell, cilia starts, and coughing and wheezing decline. So within years, you know, uh, the risk of heart attacks, risk of lung cancers are decreased appreciably. So I kept these five words, five slides, particularly for, for, for smoking cessation because, <clears throat> excuse me, smoking is a big public health problem and it causes so many things along with it. Not only in many countries, the, iron, the environment is so polluted, and then also we are taking smoke inside. That's like a triple wham. Outdoor air pollution in many countries uh, also is a very big cause of premature deaths worldwide. Each year, with close to 60% deaths from heart attacks and stroke. So, 
So PM 2.5 inhalation causes hypertension, insulin resistance. Very importantly, from my point of view, they cause endothelial dysfunction and cause stiffening of the arteries. Why do I say from my point of view that now we can diagnose them clinically without putting a, uh, a, even a needle in your body, we can tell you that, look, your arterial stiffness is more than 1,200 meters per second. Your arteries are not dilating to eight times what they should. You have arterial stiffness. You have endothelial dysfunction just by non-invasive non-invasive tests. So there are tests available, but you have to take the, take the responsibility not to smoke because again, as I repeat, it's not only bad for you, but it's also bad for the people around you, your family, your friends. I mean, you're causing you know, problems to them. And on an average, you know, seven to eight years of life is lost because of that. 1.1 million deaths in India were linked to PM 2.5 air pollution. And look at this. I mean, this is the, one of the most famous uh, structures in the world. And this is what air pollution can do to it. And um, if you go there without mask and all, of course, masking has become so important now, but this is masking for a different reason. Next to cigarette smoking, to my mind, what is important is stress. Everybody is stressed these days. Even a child going for class 12 examination, we put so much stress on them uh, that they are not only they have a heavy baggage at their back, but also their peer pressure is that, you know, everybody expects them to get 90%. Look at these poor kids. I mean, you know, they're, they've got so much to do, so little time. Core questions for the assessment of psychosocial risk factors, there are scores available. And a work and family stress, social isolation, depression, anxiety, hostility, type D personality, all these are the ones do not take these lightly. Do not. These are important things. They can snuff away your life. Particularly, I'll take a half a sec minute here, that during this pandemic, when the people are all at home or made to sit at home, uh, stress is playing a big role. So until and unless you open the pores of your mind, you open the pores of your mind and say, well, it is what it is but I'm going to regularize my day. I'm going to spend some time on my laptop also. I'm, I'm working from home, but I'm also going to have healthy food. Look at the passions which I didn't do and also exercise, it may be in the house. But this is a common feature, stress. Again, along with stress, you can imagine the person is also eating something which gives you zero calories, but gives you saturated fats gives you a lot of salt, gives you trans fatty acids. All these will ultimately go from the head to the heart to the legs. And of course, one of the common causes of stress in everyday life <clears throat> is traffic, chaos, chaotic traffic. We, are, we started at the last moment, we are getting late, and there you are, you have a bundle of cars in front of you. Another thing which I wanted to discuss, and I don't want to jump from stress to sleep, but sleep is a very important thing. If you're sleeping more than eight hours, or if you're sleeping less than six hours, it can give rise to a lot of issues. But one thing very commonly not asked by doctors, not told by the patients is snoring at night getting up not fresh in the night, sleeping at any given point of time, any opportunity, you may be a patient of obstructive sleep apnea. Many spouses come and tell me that, sir, our husbands can sleep at any time. What a good husband they are. They just sleep. Well, sometimes a person is tired. He has to go. His chauffeur is driving. He has to go. He may nap, but... If there is obstructive sleep apnea, it will increase the process of atherosclerosis. It will increase your blood pressure. It will increase your possibility, your probability of getting a rhythm disturbance of the heart called arrhythmia. 
it's a dangerous condition. All you have to do is to get a sleep test done, which will be done in the night, and then people can look at it and say, well, maybe you read a BiPAP or a CPAP. That's another matter, but do not take. Sleep hygiene has an important bearing on today's disease. Stress busters, very important. Negative people, afraid of change. Positive people are already are ready to experience. But here I may add one thing that you know you have to be not you have to be not only positive which is good to say anyway but you also have to be a realist what can i achieve what am i looking at i've been inside my house for 90 days what have i have i really done have i even kept a logbook have i taught my children a new thing have i taught myself a new thing these are that is reality Negative and positive is easy, but even the most positive people under this lockdown may have a problem. And this should become an everyday affair. Laughter is a good medicine, but you need to have good friends. You need to mask yourself in these, in these uh, difficult times. You must do social distancing and you must, be, uh, and you must sanitize yourself. Have you, if you've done all that, you laugh with your friends, Definitely, it's the best medi medication. Uh, one of the other stress busters, which many of my uh, patients come and now tell me, is that, you know, sir, you told us about the basics of yoga and the basics of meditation. We find it very useful to just sit at home these days, find a quiet corner, all of us sit down and we do yoga. We belong to a country which gave this concept thousands of years ago to the rest of the world. The rest of the world has lapped up. It's time we also lap it up. Yoga, meditation is one of the finest ways of busting the stress and leading a heart healthy lifestyles. Family and social support is of course very important. Being with nature is, is a good stress buster. This is a this is a photograph which my daughter from the United Kingdom sent me. And just looking at it, I and my wife, we feel sometimes so serene, you know, the greenery. So just to be out, just to, the family goes out and be, be and is with nature. It's, it's a very big stress buster. Recreation is a very big stress buster. It can be a game that you play with your, it can be a team sport, or it can be an individual sport but recreation is huge. Many of us who lead a life of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. sometimes say, oh, you know, we've got no time. Well, you have to create time. If you cannot create time for recreation, for your passions, for your hobbies, then life is incomplete because you, you, it is a stress buster. You, you'll get up in the morning far, far more fresher you look at life in a new perspective. Everybody has, has, has his own problems. But if you played basketball or if you played table tennis and you've discussed things with your friends, you'll feel so much the better. So this is again a stress buster. And also a team sport gives you that give and take spirit. Okay, I may have lost the catch. It doesn't matter. I'll try to catch the next one. So these are the things. So you have to break this negative stress chain reaction. Why? Because many people during, because of continuous stress will overeat, will become obese, will become physically inactive, will increase their LDL levels, may even become diabetic and hypertensive and think that smoking is a stress buster. Oh, it isn't. So this one thing, one thing here, which we started with, we have created a monster amongst our own selves. But we didn't go the other route. We didn't listen to music. We didn't pursue our pleasures or our passions, which we, were, were, which we could have done. But we went another route. We would drink every day. We would smoke every day. We would take and say, okay, maybe if I'll have a drink, the stress will go away. It's, it isn't going to go away. When you wake up the next morning, it'll strike you even more harsher. So this is an important 
message, a negative stress chain reaction. Because in lifestyle management, stress is very important. Mind you, I showed you that slide. Psychosocial stress, obesity, physical inactivity, they go hand in hand. They absolutely go hand in hand. And of course, if you are obese to begin with, okay, now is the time to start. So stress management strategies, I tell you, don't look at this chart. You will have to find your own way. If you're an intelligent person, you will find your own way. You'll say, okay, maybe I'll just listen to <clears throat> music of the 17s, 70s for half an hour. And then I will come in and be with my family, be, play with my children. That also is yoga. Yoga, meditation, recreation, participating in hobbies and pastimes, looking at issues logically, talking through problems, being well organized. I see people struggling in the mornings, coming late, parking their cars, hitting somebody and then saying, I said, well, yeah, guys, you can get up early. What's the big deal? And reach, reach your place of work, get into your clothes, start your day, see what are your priorities. Half the problem is reaching a thing well in time. Sedentary lifestyle is the bane of this world these days. People are, have become, you know, those who are IT workers, those who have to spend a lot of time on their computers, obviously, but I tell you, even, even if you have to spend eight hours in front of your computer, there are ways by which you can walk, you can keep the computer at a higher state. You can do what is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's called NEAT, just standing up. I remember many years ago, there were restaurants in different countries and say, oh, look, you want to sit down or you want to have food standing up? And it's great. You know, you can just sit, stand up, walk around, and that makes a lot. So necessarily, many times we have to sit. I'm sitting here for one hour. Though it's a pleasant Sunday morning, I should have been exercising, but you can always make that up. Obesity will follow, obviously. You will have to guide your children that iPads and smartphones are very essential in life, but there is a time and place for everything. And you can set your own example. So also there is a general apathy towards a healthy lifestyle. Why? Because it's easy. It's easy to smoke. It's easy to, uh, to, to, to uh, eat high fat diet. You know, they have, there's a craving for it. And, uh, of course, your work can be done on the computer, so why should you worry? But these are things which are not good. So the general apathy towards healthy lifestyles should be changed to healthy lifestyle. That look, I will once in six months maybe go and have a high fat diet, but otherwise I will have positive diet. Exercise, one of the basic things which can change you is physical exercise. It's, it, it's amazing. You can exercise on foot, you can exercise on the bicycle, do the health benefits of cycling, outweighs the risk, don't even look about it. But most important is one in four Indians are at risk due to lack of exercise. Cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, dementia, many cancers. At the bottom of this is what Dr. Bandari has already said, obesity. Obesity all over the world. It is a pro-inflammatory stage it causes cytokines to increase in your bodies, interleukins to increase in your bodies. It can cause hyperinsulinemia, and that can cause further diseases. So just as stress busters are important, so is exercise. What do you have to do? 150 minutes of moderate exercise in the whole week. That's about it. If you eat seven days a week, you gotta exercise for six day, seven days a week. 30 to 40 minutes brisk walk, minimum five days. I've changed that to seven days a week, supplemented by an increase in daily lifestyle activities. Park your car, where you can walk half a kilometer. If you have to use a restroom, which you do three to four times a day, pick up a restroom which is farthest from your desktop. And those who are lucky, they can take breaks at work, they can do garden, gardening, they can do household work. And the benefits are huge, huge. In decreased cardiovascular mortality, decreased blood pressure, increasing your LDL cholesterol will come down, your HBA will come down. So it's huge. 
So daily physical activity in mortality in hypertension, this is the Copenhagen Heart Study, I'm not going to the details, but it says that even light physical activity can, can give you a lot of good to your body. So directly you can measure those who exercise regularly and are cardiovascular fit actually live much longer. Of course, they live much better. There's no doubt about that, but they will also look better. So risk of CV morbidity and mortality decreases and light moderate activity should, should be suggested to all people. You know, one of the things I'm now realizing when I talk to my uh, oncology, my cancer uh, friends, uh, chairman of that department, that they say, look, those who do physical exercise just to stay fit, fit or they feel they're decreasing their cardiovascular mortality also have 20% less cancers, which is huge. Just physical activity, just looking at stress bursting and also physical activity can help you so much. So now, from chronological age to vascular age, I showed this slide to you. Now it makes sense that those who exercise, those who exercise their intermomedial thickness, atherosclerosis, cancer risk will be much lower. Say no to excess sugar. We know that. I mean, if you look at it, the India has become the diabetes capital of the world because we have so many sweet things with, with our food, after our food, we just have to, it's not just sweet, sweet things, but also carbs. So if you follow this food principle, you can say that you have to be cautious that you take grains, vegetables, fruits. These are important things. Milk, these are important things. And oil, you look at this very thin yellow bar, that's oils. If you do this and see, if you look at our Indian diet or our South Asian diet, most of these things are already there, but it depends upon how we cook them. So this is the redesigning of the food pyramid in which sweets and all are given the apex. The base consists of grains, lentils, fruits. Your diet should have multicolors. It should look, and that is a good diet. So these are the ones which are good. These are the eatables and uh, salads and DASH diet I particularly mentioned here because in the realm of hypertension, if you look up uh, about diet, this 40, 50 years old diet will still be seen. DASH diet, low salt diet. And of course, these are, this is stuff which will immediately give you empty calories, but will give you uh, trans fatty acids and so on. So, and a lot of fat. Empty calories, say no to excess salt because salt is equal to hypertension. WHO recommends salt intake to be, so this is NaCl five grams, which will give you two grams of sodium per heap teaspoonful, which is flattened. So two grams of sodium salt. But in many countries, people take up to 22 or 11 grams of salt. Obviously, we will have all kinds of cardiovascular disease. I'm, I was very happy to read a review article recently in Journal of American College of Cardiology, which says it's not only blood pressure, but there are a lot of other things that salt does to you. And the miracle of uh, prevention is right there. Why isn't it our country where we have decreased the heart rates, where we have decreased the deaths. So the exercise polypill works. You exercise, you diet, you relax, you do positive thinking. And here, I will take, I will take a, a minute and say that if you followed a low risk lifestyle, and married down with the lifestyle polypill, you will never have heart attacks. And what this low risk lifestyle factors are, number one, never smoked. A body mass index between 18.5 to 24.9 kilograms per meter square. Exercise more than 30, <coughs> equal to more than 30 uh, minutes per day. Moderate alcohol intake, if at all, and high quality of diet. If you put this along with your lifestyle polypill, obviously you're going to have a much better quality of life and no heart attacks. 
So changing gears for the last time, we started with ASAP. Okay, so the A is burden of cardiovascular disease in general and heart attacks in particular are increasing alarmingly in South Asia and in India. Younger individuals in the working age group, that's the, that's the irony, are targeted more and have more disease, have disease more and more. One of my DM, DNB students has just finished uh, a thesis on patients below 40 years of age. So I said, yeah, look, you finished it in six, in barely uh, six months. Yes, yeah, sir, the cases are abounding. You give me a, a, uh, a this thing of 100 cases, about 150 cases in less than five, six months. So A, awareness. If we are South Asians, we have a higher chance of getting heart attacks. S, screening. If you do preventive diagnostic strategies as defined, if you look at, tell your doctor, sir, I need a master checkup, but please look at atherosclerosis. Tell me my flow mediated vasodilation. Do a calcium score if so needed. If you have, so have proper screening and give me the correct value of LDL cholesterol. Now there is a new thing called non-HDL cholesterol. Very simply, you minus the good cholesterol from the total cholesterol and whatever comes out is the non-HDL cholesterol. This is atherogenic, meaning this can cause blockages of arteries. So you have done screening. So you were aware, you got screening done. Once you were found that yes, you had calcium score, which is 20. You had a plaque in the intimamidal thickness. You had LDL cholesterol, which is 130. You started to work on yourself. And you went into healthy lifestyle with yoga, which is the new mantra. You looked at your stressors. You looked at your diet. You looked at recreation. And you started early. That will give rise to prevention. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where I work. This is Madanta the Medicity. And we have a program of reversal of heart disease. And um, I would enjoy upon you all not to go for reversal. You should not have the disease in the first place. Thank you, Dr. Bandari. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.